Hi, the title of my presentation is The Tribal Image, Hans Everhard Kaufman's Photographs of the Naga Tribes. Um, I'm going to start with a very commonsensical saying, a picture paints a thousand words, um, but what we don't actually think about when we think about this um, saying is that we tend to um, be suspicious of words and be aware of how unreliable and biased um, texts can be, whether they be um, newspaper articles and so on. And that's why we cross-reference as, as undergraduates. Um, we tend to not be as critical of pictures as photographs. And this is one thing that I'd like you to think about as we go through this presentation. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of background um, as to uh, visual anthropology, which is the field that I did research in this summer. Um, and so that you, that you can understand the context of the pictures that we're going to be examining. Uh, I am then going to show you how these pictures portray a heritage of indexical anthropology, and I'll tell you what that is, um, and then show you how um, that indexical anthropology is um, mitigated by some very em empathetical pictures as well. So, a bit of background. Um, we're going to be looking at pictures that were taken by the German anthropologist um, Hans Eberhard Kaufmann, in the 1930s. Hans Eberhard Kaufmann was um, an anthropologist who traveled to India and took pictures of Indian people. And one of the few things that I found out about him is that he was um, quite a strong fascist supporter and he created a fascist group in, a, in Switzerland in the 1930s. Um, he donated in the, in the 1970s over 200 photographs of the Naga tribes, which are um, tribes from um, northern India, uh, and he donated them to the Musée du Cape Poly, where I found them um, this summer, and as far as I'm aware, they're, I'm the first person to have ever studied them. Um, so, the Naga tribes are part of the Adivasi, which is the, um, the accepted Indian word for um, a number of isolated tribes within the Indian subcontinent who are uh, protected by the Indian constitution. And they are typically isolated groups with their own language, their own rituals, um, their own societal structures, and um, they live very separately from uh, the main, the main um, population. And that's why they're of particular interest to anthropologists. Um, and I want you to be aware that if there is a long tradition of visual anthropology in India, starting um, and most strikingly with a body of photographs called the People of India that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. Um, the pictures that Hans Eberhard Kaufmann took um, in India were part of an anthropological study. So it's not entirely surprising that they portray quite a strong heritage of a 19th century uh, approach to visual anthropology called indexical photography. And indexical photography um, tries to identify and classify a population um, in order to categorize it and be able to identify all of its main features and separate it from the main population or for, from other groups. Um, so it's supposed to be scientific. It's part of anthropology, which is a, a social science. Um, and as such, we would expect it to be quite neutral and objective and factual. Um, but actually, as most um, social sciences and humanities, they can be incredibly biased and imbued with politics and ideology. And indexical photography in particular was quite often used to justify colonization because a lot of anthropologists went out to the colonies and um, tried to find out why these people were actually um, so much inferior to the Western powers that colonized them. So they, they would justify the fact that um, the pygmies were physically and um, morally um, decadent um, and as a part of evolution. They would bring in the theory of evolution as well. Um, and so the people of India, the, the corporate, the photographs that I'm telling you about, is an example of um, those very political um, and scientific works. Um, it was commissioned by the Viceroy of India after a number of large-scale riots in India against the British rule. And the Viceroy wanted to know more about his enemies or the population he was ruling over to ascertain loyalties and um, potential issues. So he sent out um, cameras 
with professional photographers, but also with military officers and so on, who were going into every corner of India and asked them to photograph every caste, religion, um, race and tribe that they came across. So, um, I'm going to talk to you about two methods used by um, indexical photography to classify people. The first is the production of types um, using props, costumes and the background to signify a subject's role in society. And so the, the production of types was used to be able to look at a type, understand what the type was and then identify people in the general population. Um, this is from the people of India, so from the 1870s. It says, um, Brinjara and wife, itinerant grain merchant, the harem poor. So the way that the people are dressed um, would have been very important. And in, in terms of uh, props, the particular costume that the man and woman are wearing, uh, the turban, the staff, which they would have used for walking, um, showing that they were itinerant, um, the pouch or grain at the bottom of their, at the, at their feet, um, would have all been <coughs> used as clues and short, shortcuts to identify groups. Um, what's quite interesting is that in the uh, 1930s, sorry, um, Kaufman was using very similar techniques. So the, this is one of Kaufman's pictures from the Musée du Kivoli, and um, it says a chief from Kalio Kengui wearing a woven bracelet, a little gong on his apron, and a tattoo on his chest. So what the caption refers to are all of the props and attributes that um, that person is wearing, and his stance, his very straight stance, um, and his costumes sort of erase the person behind those props, and um, they're not interested in who the individual is behind the social role. That's not what the anthropologist is interested in at all. So it has a rather um, objectifying um, effect on the subject. The second uh, method that indexical photography used is anthropometry. Um, and anthrop anthropometry, anthropo means man or human, and metry means the measure. So anthropometry was literally the measure of, of features and usually facial features. And anthropology was used at the end of the 19th century to sort of examine uh, prostitutes and thieves and murderers to understand why they were so much morally decayed. So the idea was that there was a correlation between someone's facial features and their moral standing. So they would go around and, you know, say that um, a lot of murderers have had very narrow um, or very short um, foreheads. Or, very, or their eyes very close together and say that it, um, it, it showed that they were uh, prone to deceit and so on or, or had a lack of intelligence. Um, anthropologists apparently took a leap of faith and decided to apply that to entire groups and tribes. So <laughs> in the colonies um, that was used to, say, to as I said, um, categorise whole tribes. Um, this was taken in the 1930s by Kaufman again and as you can see, it looks very much like a mugshot, frontal and um, side. And Kaufman would have been able to take these photographs back to his um, laboratory in um, Germany and examine the size of the features, compare it to other tribes and so on, and try and ascertain um, why it was that, that the white race was so much superior to these people, according to him. Um, one thing I want to show you is what it says at the, at the top here on, on the cardboard mount, it was written actually by um, Kaufman. And it says, India, Assam, Naga um, from the east. Um, and it shows a meticulous cataloging of place and tribe. It also says, right next there, next to there, um, types and clothing. All of the photographs have a category on them. And so, like, um, funeral rites or um, ways of preparing food and there was a whole category devoted to types and clothing which shows you how important it was for them to um, create types, representative types. Um, so this is a measurable facial profile of a typical Eastern Nagaranga. Um, and again, um, you can't really see the person behind that, the, the measure of the features. Um, the person is very expressionless and um, it, it object objectifies them. 
Um, however, you also find pictures in the same collections that are very empathetic and I actually thought uh, might have just been part of the Kaufman's um, holiday pictures that he'd mixed in with his work pictures. Uh, this one completely breaks with the anthropological norm by being taken from below. And the dancer's social role is signified by the movement, and you can see the, how, how spontaneous um, the, their facial expressions are. Um, so it completely breaks with the very frontal and serious photographs of indexical um, anthropology. And um, these wonderful ladies um, show that, again, there was a lot of empathy for some of the subjects. Um, so this remarkable sensitivity empathy um, are a mark of the deep change that, that was occurring in visual anthropology um, between talking merely about people as objects and talking with people um, and, and respecting you know, the way that people represented themselves. Um, so today, anthropology usually aims to go with, rather with a lesser tendency and um, allow tribal populations to represent themselves and speak for, speak for themselves so that the role of the anthropologist becomes more of that of a facilitator for their voice. Any questions?